How do you get that much detail on the teeth and the scales? <laughs> so I printed the Star Wars Ranker model twice. Once on a resin printer and once on an FDM printer. And the results are wild. One took 41 hours and cost me 48 bucks. The other, 90 hours and just seven. I've avoided resin printers for years. Honestly, the chemicals, the cleanup, the workflow, it just wasn't worth the hassle for me. But then I got my hands on the Hay Gears Reflex and it completely flipped my thinking. This video isn't about picking a winner. It's about how a premium resin printer like the Reflex can actually work with your FDM setup instead of replacing it. Let's break down where each one shines and how combining both could level up your entire print game. My name is Nick and I'm here to help you get the most out of 3D printing whether you're just getting started or you've been at it for a while. I printed the exact same Rancor model with both printers and the results are pretty interesting. The differences I found might actually change how you think about 3D printing collectibles and why having both technologies in your toolkit could give you the best of both worlds. Let's get into the specs first. The Hay Gears Reflex uses a 385 nanometer wavelength LCD system with a 33 micron XY resolution, about the width of a human hair. The Bamboo Lab A1, I decided to stick with a standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle instead of switching to the 0.2 millimeter nozzle. The main reason was the print times. Using the 0.2 millimeter nozzle reached over 150 hours, and honestly, I don't think it would be a fair practical comparison. So I kept the 0.4 millimeter nozzle, but ran it at its lowest setting of a 0.08 millimeter layer height. It's a setup that's a lot more accessible to most people, and while the print still took 90 hours, it was at least manageable. Most people assume resin prints are automatically better than FDM prints. In many ways they are, but putting them side by side revealed that each method has its own strengths that you could take advantage of depending on the project. The resin print displays incredible micro detail in the Rancor's skin texture, individual bumps, and wrinkles that simply disappear on the FDM version. The face, especially around the nasal area, shows fine textures that the reflex clearly captured while the A1 couldn't reproduce. When you want hyper-realism, LCD resin absolutely takes the crown, but for larger models or pieces where texture is less critical, FDM still holds the ground beautifully. A close-up of the teeth and claws makes a difference even more apparent. The resin print captures each tooth ridge with surgical precision, while the FDM print shows visible layer lines despite the 0.08 millimeter layer height. It's that kind of detail that matters when you're printing collectibles, miniatures, or anything that's going to be examined up close. Whereas FDM shines when you need size, strength, or speed without sweating the micro details. What really surprised me was the material feel. Hagear's PAF10 resin creates a semi-flexible finish that feels like an actual collectible figure rather than rigid plastic. This is something that standard PLA just can't achieve. I noticed missing teeth on the FDM print after support removal, and my daughter broke the chain on the FDM Rancor's arm almost immediately. Meanwhile, the PAF10 print allows for flexible details that bend without snapping. A great example of why having both printing options gives you so much more creative freedom. Another thing worth mentioning about the Reflex is the material range. The Reflex wasn't just designed for figurines or display models. It's actually part of Hagear's full material ecosystem. Beyond standard resins, it supports high transparency materials like the PAT10, as well as wax casting resins, elastic resins, and even ABS-like engineering materials. That opens the door for creating not just prototypes, but real end use parts with professional strength and performance, something that traditional FDM materials can't fully match. Seeing the clarity and surface quality of the PAF10 prints is just a glimpse of what's possible with this system. The printer's voxel accuracy stays within 16 microns, and this microscopic precision dramatically enhances realism and fine features like the Rancor teeth and claws. Resin unlocks these details, but when you combine that strength with the scale and versatility of FDM, that your projects really start to level up. However, this quality comes with a significant cost premium. Resin costs more than filament. Plus, you need isopropyl alcohol for cleaning and gloves for handling. It's part of why having both technologies in your setup lets you pick the right tool for the right project without overspending when you need to. Is this detail worth the extra cost and hassle? That depends on your project. For detailed display pieces like the Rancor, resin absolutely shines. But for larger everyday models where durability or cost efficiency matters more, FDM is still king. Pairing the two gives you options no matter what you're building. Before choosing a resin printer based solely on quality, it's worth considering the workflow differences between the technologies. These real world factors might matter even more. 
let's break down the actual printing process next and see how combining both approaches can cover you no matter what challenges your project throws at you. So, what would you rather have? A great print that costs $48 or a good print that costs $7? It's not as obvious as you might think, especially once you realize using FDM and resin together can give you a perfect balance for different projects. Here's what my testing revealed with the Rancor model. The resin version on the Hay Gears printer completed in 41 hours and consumed almost a full bottle of PAF10 resin, costing about 48 bucks. The FDM version on the Bamboo Lab A1 took 90 hours, but used only $7 worth of PLA. Think of it like choosing between a sports car and an economy sedan, but why not have both in the garage? Resin gives you the speed and detail when it matters most, while FDM gives you the efficiency for larger, less detailed critical prints. This creates a value equation where you weigh time against money and also consider which machine to use when. With client work with deadlines or display pieces needing incredible detail, the time savings and quality of resin justify the expense. For bigger personal projects without time pressure, the FDM route saves you a lot of money. Being able to choose both gives you the flexibility instead of forcing trade-offs. The raw numbers don't account for the additional work with resin either. I had to divide the Rancor into four separate prints each needing washing and curing afterward, adding about 20 minutes of hands-on time per part. FDM skips all that. Again, it shows how pairing these two methods lets you match your workflow to the type of project you're tackling. Resin printing carries hidden costs as well, isopropyl alcohol for cleaning and gloves for safety. The FDM print skips all of that, being ready immediately. Having access to both workflows gives you the freedom to prioritize costs, convenience, and quality depending on the print. I used the Blueprint Slicer with Hay Gears, which performed really well, once I got through the initial setup. At first, my failures were pure user error. I tried printing the Rancor model at 100% solid, forgetting that resin models need hollowing. But Hay Gears' support team made a huge difference. Not only did they respond extremely fast, but they were genuinely helpful and patient every time I reached out. It's also ridiculously easy to open a support ticket straight from within inside the Blueprint Slicer which is something you rarely see with other 3D printing manufacturers. Every support experience I had with Hay Gears was excellent, fast, helpful, and painless. After their guidance, I had zero failures. The resin print captured minute features missing from the FDM print. The critical question, are those extra details worth the extra $41? For close-up display pieces, absolutely. For larger or purely functional models, maybe not. But that's why having both machines gives you the power to prioritize what's important, project by project. The Bamboo Lab's cost advantage makes it ideal for larger models or batch prints. For my upcoming 55-inch Star Destroyer project, using the resin for the entire thing would be financially insane. But for intricate pieces like the tiny Millennium Falcon and tower details, resin will be my go-to. I'll be combining both printers, playing to each one's strength to balance quality, cost, and time perfectly. Post-processing requirements differ significantly. I spent about 15 minutes removing supports from the FDM print versus 30 minutes for the resin print. The resin model had far fewer visible scars. Again, it shows if you're strategic about choosing which printer for which part, you can save time where it counts and get showroom quality where it matters. The ultimate decision factor might not just be quality or cost, it's the whole workflow. Next, I'll walk through post-processing reality washing, curing, and cleaning with resin versus the simplicity of FDM. And we'll see even more clearly how using both together gives you more control over your time, cost, and final results. There's a reason why I avoided resin printing for years. It wasn't just the cost, it was the entire experience. Resin printing has always been messy, pouring toxic chemicals, endless cleaning, complicated support removal, all pain points that made me stick with FDM printing for most of my projects. The Hay Gears Reflex claims to change that. And while it doesn't make resin printing as simple as FDM, it makes it easy enough that adding resin to your arsenal finally makes sense. The Bamboo Lab A1 offers a hands-off experience I've gotten used to. Load filament, hit print, walk away. It's as easy as that. Once done, snap off supports and you're finished. No chemicals, no curing, no special equipment. So when Hay Gears claimed to make resin printing simple, I was skeptical, but surprisingly, they got a lot closer than I expected. The Hay Gears unique bottle system immediately caught my attention. Resin bottles load upside down into the printer with an automatic dispensing system handling everything for you, eliminating one of resin printing's messiest pain points. 
No more pouring or splashing. The bottles have a spring valve in the lid to prevent leaks and the printer automatically identifies your resin type. The electromechanical valve precisely meters flow into the vat. It's another way Hay Gears makes resin feel less intimidating to add alongside your FDM workflow. Their slicer was another pleasant surprise. Automatic support generation works exceptionally well once you find your rhythm. After the learning curve, I had zero failures. The software correctly supports overhangs, guides you through the layout, slicing, and even offers model repair to catch issues early on, making resin printing feel much more plug and play, especially for people already familiar with modern FDM slicers. One downside is Hay Gear's fairly closed ecosystem. They push using their proprietary resins, which are great quality, but definitely premium priced. Some creators have successfully experimented with cheaper third-party resins, so it is doable if you're willing to test settings a bit. Using third-party resins could lower costs dramatically. Some are just $20 or less, making resin printing much more competitive. But you do sacrifice the premium PVC-like finish that the official PAF10 resin creates. Again, it's about picking the right tool, and now having both options really opens up your choices. Even with improvements, resin still requires post-processing that FDM doesn't. Washing, curing, it's all part of the deal. The Hay Gears wash box feels a little over-engineered, even though my daughter did love watching it spin. There are two cleaning boxes with valves to empty the dirty resin down into the other without having to dip your hands into the alcohol. And ironically, the bill plate doesn't fit unless you're doing smaller prints. Minor quirks, but still, resin post-processing is way less painful than my past experiences. It's another reason why now I actually enjoy having resin as an option alongside FDM. The touchscreen interface on the Reflex feels like a full command center. It's possibly the most user-friendly setup I've seen in 3D printers. Menus are clear, the translations are pretty good, real-time feedback and troubleshooting cut down print failures. There's a minor bug with the estimated print time right now, but overall, it's so polished that it makes jumping between FDM and resin workflows almost seamless. The Hay Gears Reflex transforms resin printing from a messy, intimidating process into something that's much more closer to FDM simplicity. It's still not quite as effortless as the Bamboo Lab A1, but compared to older resin printers, it's night and day. I'd wish they opened up material compatibility more, but even now, it's a strong case for pairing FDM and LCD workflows alongside one another. After all my testing, here's what it comes down to. The Hay Gears Reflex makes truly amazing quality prints, and it's definitely easier to use than older resin printers. It's not meant to replace FDM, but to complement it. Resin gives you access to incredible detail for display pieces or small parts where every texture matters. The Bamboo Lab A1 is still the practical, everyday choice for most makers. It gives you great quality at a fraction of the cost, making it perfect for bigger models, functional prints, or just printing a lot of parts that don't break the bank. In the end, it really depends on what matters most for your projects. Ultra detailed prints with a more involved workflow or everyday affordability and flexibility. Having both FDM and resin in your setup lets you pick the right tool for the right job every single time. And that's where the real magic happens. I plan to keep the reflex as a permanent part in my printing workflow. Even with massive projects like my 55 inch Star Destroyer, I'll be using the Reflex to create highly detailed parts that FDM alone struggled with. There are so many other small components across the Star Destroyer where having resin level precision is going to make a huge impact. I'm honestly excited to see how much better this model and future projects can turn out by combining both technologies. Anyways, thanks for hanging out with me today. If you're working on any projects of your own, remember you don't have to pick one way of printing. Having both FDM and resin in your toolkit opens up a whole new level of creativity. If you're interested in checking out the Hay Gears Reflex or any other printers in the lineup, I've got an affiliate link down below. Using it helps support the channel and it really does make a difference. Thanks again for your support. Again, my name is Nick. I hope you're having a great day and as always, happy printing.